When comparing networking to cybersecurity, I want to focus on some of the daily tasks that one may do in either position, uh, the path to get to one of these positions, and then also the type of work or the work style, and then also the remote potential. So is either of these positions, is it possible for someone to work fully remote in either one of these positions? So first, I'd like to look at the daily task. So from a networking perspective, most of the time, your daily task is more of your router configurations, uh, switch configurations, monitoring traffic. So it's not every day that you're configuring devices. So most of the time, you could go weeks or months without configuring anything. Unless something breaks or unless something goes down, then you reconfigure that device and go out and replace it. But when you're not configuring devices, if you're, you don't have a new site that's coming up that you need to get ready, a lot of times you're going to be monitoring your network. So you're going to be monitoring traffic. So seeing what's going on on your network, look for any anomalies, uh, seeing you know if anything different, any slowness, anything like that on your network. So basically doing a lot of housekeeping. So you're going to be doing that housekeeping. And at the same time you're doing this, you're also going to have a ticketing system. So you're going to have tickets that's networking issues that's coming in from other users. So other users may call the help desk. They are having this issue. They explain the issue. Help desk determine that, okay, this is an issue that the network team needs to fix. So that help desk will assign that ticket to network, and then that ticket comes in your networking queue. So you also have those tickets that you may be working on. And then, like I said, if you're not working on tickets or if you're not monitoring the network, and then there's a slew of other things you could also be doing. So from the networking, like I said, it's one of those positions where it was, uh, you, 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 you didn't know what to expect each day. Every day was different. You know, for me, I remember some days coming in, like I said, I was, you heard before, like some days I would come in, I basically went and see my desk the whole eight hours, you know, and some days I would come in, you know, it's almost like I'm watching paint dry on the wall. So, you know, it's a wide range, which uh, keeps it interesting because you're going to learn a lot because you're going to see all kind of issues because issues is being reported from your organization, uh, from regular users that's having issues. All those issues, if it's networking, they'll be coming into your networking team. And then on the cybersecurity side, so we, usually with cybersecurity, usually you're going to be doing a lot of monitoring also. So you're monitoring logs, um, basically scanning the network for vulnerabilities. Uh, I know there's, you have different names of these scans, but basically it scans the whole network, gives you a report of the vulnerabilities on your network. Then basically from that cybersecurity perspective, you break up those vulnerabilities and you see who those vulnerabilities belong to. So one of the vulnerabilities could be that, okay, there's a switch on the network or a router on the network and it doesn't have any passwords on it. Or maybe the passwords aren't encrypted, you know, things like that. So this scan is going to spot out a lot of those vulnerabilities against your systems. Then it's up to that security team to divvy those out to whoever owned those products that has those vulnerabilities. So you're going to be doing that. Then also you're going to have someone that's responding to threats. So you got plenty of devices on your network. So you got PCs, you got uh, laptops, you got a slew of other devices, but basically on all those devices, just like at our home, where for me, I run malware bikes a lot. So shout out to malware bikes. If you're listening to this, hit me up. So for this, like I said, I run malware bikes, but in a large enterprise, you're going to have a dedicated software that you have for your uh, virus protection, things like that. So that security team is usually monitoring those. So when they get an alert that this PC down the hallway got a virus, it's up to that security team to start mitigating that issue. You know, that issue could be, oh, let me contact network and they shut down the port. So that PC is no longer on the network. Then have someone take that PC and get it re-imaged or something of that nature. So the security team, like I said, they handle a lot of responsibility also. And like I said, it goes past just the firewall aspect, the firewall configuration, things like that. There's a lot of things that you normally wouldn't think about that the security out security team also handles. So if you think about mobile devices, you know, most organizations, they give their user mo mobile devices. That may be something that falls up under security also. So, but usually the gist of it is that security team is protecting the network while networking is sometimes 
building that network. And then the typical path that someone may take to get to one of these positions. So speaking from a network perspective, so I've seen people come in at help desk. So for me, I came in like a help desk operations type deal and pretty much went from there to desktop, then to network as a network tech. Like I said, so you have different ways you can get there, but the, the premise is once you land in networking, whether it's a network tech, network admin, sometimes they may be real similar positions. But once you land, your, get your foot in networking, then usually you want to work your way up to, if you come in at a tech, you want to work your way up to administrator. Then from there, you work your way up to an engineer. Then from there, you work your way up to a senior engineer. Then from there, if it goes higher, usually it may be an architect or something like along those lines. But basically, that's the path that most people end up going by. So the main thing is with any position you want to do in IT, the main thing is to get your foot in the door first. So I don't care if it's coming in the door sweeping the flow. I don't care if it's coming in the door as a janitor, then get into the IT. But basically getting into that organization, then started to make your way up. Because once you get there, you know, as long as you're a good person, you know, as long as you know, saying you nobody's, you ain't really got no bad tensions between you with no one, you know, as long as you're a pretty decent human being, and then also you know your job, you know the tools, uh, you know, you're going out on your own, doing some self-study, you're going out learning things. There's no doubt in my mind that you won't move up to that position. So the main thing is getting in the door first. Then from the cybersecurity aspect, this is somewhat similar. So it is possible to come in at that lower level, come in at a help desk, uh, desktop, anything like that, then work your way to cybersecurity. And then another way that a lot of people get in is they may start out as a SOC analyst. So working at a security operations center. So they may start out as a SOC analyst. Then from there, they go to maybe a security analyst and then to an engineer and then to a senior engineer. So a lot of times you probably see some patterns here. So one of the things that you must understand also coming from the outside looking in is the hierarchy. You know how when we're working, I work retail. So I was a retail associate before. Then I had a manager and then he had a district manager. So it was it's a hierarchy. So that hierarchy, you got to understand it from the beginning. So once you understand the hierarchy, that's going to better help you to go in and navigate. So the hierarchy to most IT positions is basically that tech and admin. That's usually the first couple, the first levels. Then from admin, you go to engineer. That's usually the next level. Then from engineer, you move up to senior engineer. And that's usually the last level unless they have architect. But each one of these positions, Usually, if you look at the job descriptions, most likely they're looking for from that tech to admin. They may be looking for one to three years experience and or a certifications or a degree. Then from there, you know, it moves up to where it may be two to five years experience for their next position. But generally, if you're working in that lower position, you will have those years to move up to that next position. So, like I said, you see this with both positions there. But like I said, learning that hierarchy will better help you to navigate the IT industry. And then when we move on to the work style of these two categories. So the work style of networking, a lot of times it's probably more routine based. Uh, so basically you'll have different checks that you may do every morning. You know, you may come in, look at some logs or may come in, look at emails from last night, see if anything went down, any notifications. You may come in, you may have a router that you need to check on every morning to see if you're still getting any kind of errors on that router. So it's usually you're going to have a routine, almost like how most of us have a, a morning routine. You're going to have that same routine in networking where you got different things, different checks that you're going through the start of your day just to make sure that, OK, this is what I need to look out for. So in a sense, you're pretty much being more proactive. So you're trying to find issues before they happen and fix them to stop them from happening. So you're going to be looking through laws, looking at whatever you're using to monitor uh, your networking equipment, seeing if there's any crazy errors going on. You're going to be looking at your network utilization, seeing if you're using the utilizing most of your bandwidth. So you're going to be looking at a lot of those things. So it's going to become part of your checklist. Then on the security side, you know, you're still going to be more routine Except for from the security side, your mindset is to be more reactive to where, okay, you know, you're looking for any kind of 
anomalies on the network, any kind of viruses on the network. Then once you spot them, you react to them. Basically, you're looking for alerts on your network. So you have different systems, different pieces of software that's going to alert you of different things. So you're basically from a security perspective, you're more reactive, where from networking, you're more proactive. And then when we break it down to the remote potential. So usually this is a bit one for most people because, you know, with the right around the COVID times around there, a lot of people started going fully remote. You know, some people may be still fully remote and don't even know where their job is located at. Well, you know where it's located at, but you've never been in the building. So being able to work remote, like I said, it is a pretty good deal, especially if, uh, you know, if you're an introvert, you know, if you don't care for being around people and stuff like that, you know, being 100 percent remote is the way to go. But if you're someone like me, I like to kind of meet my team. Uh, you know, I joke around a lot, things like that. So. Me fully remote, I'm not sure after in the beginning, I would love it, but after a couple of months, I'd probably start to hate it a little bit. Or I would probably, instead of working from home remote, I would probably start going out to different co-working spaces and doing my work there where at least I can be around some people. So me, like I said, I like to be around people most of the time. So, but when we look at the remote potential, so from a networking perspective, I would say this is going to depend on your role. So Usually from a net, uh, networking perspective, usually someone will be on site. You know, it may be not just one person, maybe more than one person. You may have a rotation where every day of the week, one person works from home. Or you could be somewhere where nobody works from home. So basically from that networking perspective, you do have a lot of um, a large footprint with physical equipment. So basically... Your equipment is in every closet at your organization. So then also the data center is full up filled with your equipment. So usually if that equipment goes down, somebody needs to be there in order to replace that equipment. Now, if you if you stay close by, you know, that may be cool. But most of the time when you look at networking positions or when you're looking for network positions, usually you very rarely see any kind of remote aspect to it so unless it's like a hybrid remote where two days in three days home something like that but then when you get to cyber security so cyber security i will say cyber security there is still a good chance of being remote uh, i know a couple of folks that work in cyber security and they're 100 percent remote so being 100 percent remote like i said that's a good deal but then also with cyber security Sometimes you're, you're able to do that. And then this all depends on what side of cybersecurity you're on. So most of the time I see people that's on the information side of cybersecurity to where you may not have no physical equipment. You, uh, that's, that may be for your networking, your network security team. They may be the ones that's managing the firewall. So in that aspect, they may be in a couple of days. But for the most part, a lot of times you see cybersecurity professionals where they're able to work fully remote or mostly remote, some kind of remoteness. They, they're usually, you know, they're able to do that and still do their job very well. 